Hello everyone. Welcome to Nesso Academy. In the previous lecture, we have understood call by value and call by reference. We got the basic idea of what is call by value and call by reference and how we can perform such calls. Now we are in this lecture and the name of this lecture is Introduction to Function Overloading. In this lecture, we will properly understand the concept of function overloading which is quite important in C++. So without any further delay, let's get started with this lecture and let's see what are the topics. The first topic is motivation to study function overloading. Why we should study function overloading? This is what we need to understand first. In this topic, we will understand the same thing. Then we will move to the next topic where we will properly understand Function overloading. So these are the topics. Let's start with the first one. Motivation to study function overloading. So what's the motivation behind studying function overloading? Let's understand this through a scenario. Let's say we want to write a program to add two numbers. Either it can be integers or doubles. And we also want to display the result on the screen. For this purpose, we have attempted to write the program like this. Here I have included the iostream header file and here I have defined the add function with these two parameters. These are integer parameters and therefore they can accept integer values. The return type of this function is int, that is integer. Therefore, this function can return an integer value. Here we have the statement return x plus y. Clearly, this function has the capability to return the result of x plus y. Now, here we have the main function and inside this main function, I have written this stdc outline with the call to this function add. And here in this call, I have passed these two values, 10 and 20. We know these are integer values. These values are accepted by these integer parameters. X will receive 10, Y will receive 20. Here the operation will be performed. We will get 30. So clearly in this caller, we will get value 30. So now we know that 30 will be displayed on the screen for this function call. Now what about this function call? Here we are calling this function with values 5.4 and 12.5. Now we have double values. These are double values. We have integer parameters. These integer parameters can accept only integers. So clearly x will receive 5 and y will receive 12. 0.4 and 0.5 will be truncated. So we know the result will be 17 and we will get the output as 30 and 17. We are getting 17, not 17.9, which we were expecting. So clearly this function has the capability to handle integers, but it cannot handle double inputs. That's the problem. Now we need to find the solution to this problem. The solution is pretty simple. We can define one more function that has the capability to accept double inputs and it must operate on those inputs and return the double output. So we need to define another function. Now let's define two functions. The first function is add ints. And the second function is add doubles. Now we have two functions. Add ints, as the name suggests, has the capability to add two integers. And this function add doubles can add two double values. And it can also return a double value as the result. Now we know we will get the output as desired. Here we have this stdc out statement. With this function call add ints with values 10 and 20. From this function call, we will get the value 30. Here we are calling this specific function. And here we are calling add doubles function. And to this function, we are passing values 5.4 and 12.5. We will get the result as 17.9, which is the desired result. 
So when we execute this program, we will get the output 30 and 17.9. I hope this is clear to you. So our program is working as expected. We have found out the solution to this problem, which is writing a program to add two numbers and display the result. Now the numbers can be integers or doubles. Now here you can observe one problem. We have these two functions with similar kind of functionality. These functions can add two numbers. These functions have similar functionality, but they have different names. The first function name is add ints, and the second function name is add doubles. We need to remember these names, and we also need to remember which function we need to call for a specific purpose. This is quite cumbersome, don't you think so? Here we are maintaining these two functions with similar functionality, but they have different names. This does not make much sense. So clearly, that's a problem. We have similar functions with different names, and they also need consistent naming convention so that we can remember them. If we have defined a function with name add ints, then the other function should be add doubles, not doubles add. If we define these functions with consistent names, then it is easier for us to remember them. Otherwise, it would be difficult. Maintaining these functions is definitely quite difficult, and the problem becomes worst if we want to, let's say, add three integers and three doubles. Then we need to define two more functions. The names of those functions will be add three ints and add three doubles. Now you can imagine how the complexity increases with these functions. We need to remember the names of these functions and we need to call them appropriately whenever needed. But the problem is that these functions have the similar functionality. So it does not make much sense to define these functions with different names. This is where function overloading comes into picture. In C++, we have the concept of function overloading. With function overloading, we can do something that eliminates this problem. And this is exactly what we will learn in the next topic. For now, we know why we should study function overloading to avoid these burdensome problems. So with this, we are done with the first topic that is motivation to study function overloading. Now let's move to the second topic to understand function overloading properly. So what is function overloading? Function overloading is the concept that allows us to create multiple functions with the same name in the same scope. So through function overloading, we can define multiple functions with the same name, that too in the same scope. Now this is something that we have not studied before. We know this already that Whenever we define functions with same name in the same scope, we get error from the compiler. But here we are saying that we can define multiple functions with same name in the same scope. How is this possible? This is possible because we can define functions with either different number of parameters or different types of parameters or different order of parameters. So if that's the case, then we can define multiple functions with same name and that too in the same scope. Functions must be differentiated by number, type and order of parameters. That's the requirement. Then only we would be able to perform function overloading. I hope this idea is clear to you. So that's the concept of function overloading. Now, let's understand this concept properly through an example program. Let's consider the same example program, the same requirement that we need to satisfy. We need to write the program to add two numbers. They can be integers or doubles. 
and we need to display the result as well. Let's realize this through function overloading. Here is the program. I have included the iostream header file and I have defined these two functions. You can observe the name of these two functions are same. They have same name. They are defined in the same scope. Originally, when we define functions like this, then we will get error from the compiler. But here we will not get the error because we can observe the types of these parameters are different. This is function overloading. Here we have the add function with two integer parameters and here we have the add function with two double parameters. They are differentiated by the types of parameters. This is function overloading. We can call these functions whenever we want. Here we have defined this main function and within this stdc out, I have passed this call to the add function with values 10 and 20. These are integer values. This function call will be resolved by the compiler to this function definition. In this function definition, we have two integer parameters and these are integer values. Therefore, this function call will be resolved to this function definition, not this function definition. So clearly, we will get 30 as the result. Now, what about this function call? Here we have two double values. Compiler will automatically resolve this function call to this function definition. Here we have two double parameters and here we have two double values. So we know that this function will be called and we will get the result as 17.9. So now we know what's the output. The output is 30 and 17.9. And the beauty of function overloading is we do not have to define similar functionality functions with different names. Now we can define functions with same name that have similar functionality. So I hope this idea is clear to you and you can observe this that these functions are differentiated by types of parameters. So we have resolved this particular portion. We now have defined functions that are differentiated by types of parameters. Let's take an example of functions that are differentiated by number of parameters. Here is the example program. In this example program, I have included the iostream header file. I have also included the string header file. This header file has the declaration of the string object which we can use for the purpose of defining a string variable. So, through this string header file, we can define a string variable. And that variable can hold a string, which is nothing but a sequence of characters. So, let's say if we want to store name of a person, then we can store the name of that person within the string variable. I hope this is clear to you. Now, here is the definition of the greet function. This function has the return type of void. This means this function will not return any value and it has no parameter at all. So it has zero parameters. Inside this function, I have written this stdc outline that can display hello on the screen with a new line. Now what is after this? We have another greet function with one parameter. The return type of this function is void, but it has one parameter. So clearly these two functions are differentiated by number of parameters. Here we have zero parameter, here we have one parameter. Now inside this function, I have written this stdc outline that can display hello along with the name of some person that we pass to this function. Now here is the definition of the main function. And inside this main function, I am calling the greet function without any argument. So clearly, this function call will be resolved to this specific definition.
we will get hello along with new line on the screen. Then after this, I am calling this greet function with this string John. We know this function call will be resolved to this definition and we will see hello John on the screen. So when we execute this program, we will get this output hello and hello John. We are seeing this output in the new line because of this backslash n. I hope this is clear to you. So with this, we have understood how we can define functions with different number of parameters. These functions have the same name. Therefore, we are performing function overloading. Now let's learn how to define same functions, that is functions with same name, but they are differentiated by order of parameters. So now we are shifting our attention to order of parameters. Here is the example program for the same. I have included the iostream header file and I have defined these two functions. These are add functions. You can observe I am performing function overloading here. The return type of these functions is double. And here we can observe that the order of parameters is different. Here we have int x double y and here we have double x int y. Functionality of these two functions is same. Here we are adding two numbers. Now inside this main function, with the help of stdc out, I want to display the result of add 10, 2.5. Here we have integer first, then we have the double value. Clearly, this function call will resolve to this function definition. So now we know that we will get 12.5 as the result for this function call. What about this function call? This function call will resolve to this function definition because here we have the double value first, then we have the integer value. So we now know we will get 12.5 for this function as well. So when we execute this program, we will get the output 12.5, 12.5. But we know that this function has resolved to this specific definition and this function has resolved to this definition. And here these functions are differentiated by order of parameters. Now, I would like to emphasize on one point. There is one point that we are missing. Here we need to understand this that the return type alone is not enough to overload functions. If you want to perform function overloading, then we cannot depend on the return type. Return type cannot differentiate functions. We can have functions with same return type or different return types. This does not matter. So return type alone is not enough for function overloading. I hope this is clear to you. So with this, we have understood the concept completely and we are done with the second topic also. And we are done with this lecture. Okay, friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this lecture. I will see you in the next one.